when you understand the things of God then you begin to see a lot of profit when you understand the word what it means to you as a believer and to a church in general you begin to benefit when you don't know you perish anything that dominates the thought of a man you get it so meaning that you need to have the right thought about something but when you see his government first his rule first his interest first we can know the interest of God from the written word we can know what he is putting first to thank God because we are now in the second month of 2023. Praise God. And today is the 12th day and I believe that God will cause you to celebrate over something this day. Praise God. Remember this is our year of celebration. 2023 is and we are here of celebration. Praise God. <laughs> yeah, it is serious. When you pick the word of God, put it in your heart, believe it, speak it, live it, your life won't remain the same. The secret is in the word. The secret is in the word. The secret of success is in the word. Praise God. That is it. God follows his word. Wherever his word is, he goes there. That's why it is so important for you people, just hook yourself onto the word. Hook yourself onto the word. Because the word doesn't change. Circumstances keep changing. People keep changing. It's the word that can bring things in order. So you're welcome to our fourth part of the message we have been looking at put on the garment of righteousness. We are looking at the fourth part. Praise God. Put on the garment of righteousness. Garment is a clothing. You see, Jesus spoke something very important. He said, seek first the kingdom and its righteousness and the rest of the things that people want or run after the basic necessities of life will be added to you. You will be given. Don't run after things first. But run after the kingdom. The kingdom of God is really his rule that begins from your heart and touches and comes out of you by touching the way you live and causing you to touch others also an impact upon their lives. That's the kingdom, the rule of God. The kingdom of God is really what he desires. Every kingdom has an agenda. What God has in his heart, which he has really clearly revealed in this word. So we should look, go after what God has in his heart. What God wants to do with you. What God wants to do around you. What God wants to do in this life what God wants to do through his church that should preoccupy your mind and then righteousness righteousness is simply right living right living and then we are told we saw the other time that for you to live right there are things you should put on the way you put on your clothings and we looked at them and the wrapper, the outside wrapper, the one that covers, the clothing that covers everything we looked at was love. It is love. The highest gift. Higher than all the other gifts. The outer garment, the wrapper, is love. So love is a way of life for a believer, for a Christian. It's a way of life. So we are looking at, today, let's look at the description of love. The description of love. 
which is a very important garment for a Christian, you must exhibit it daily. You must put it on daily. The description of love. Certain things you will only understand them well when they are described than really when you try to. When you describe them, you can know them better. And love is one of those things that needs to be described. So first, let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Verse 31 says, So you should honestly desire the most helpful gifts. But now let me show you a way of life that is best of all. You see, that's how this chapter ends. Hmm? Let me show you the Christian way of life. That's really what Paul was trying to say. But now let me show you a way of life. And the way of that life is love. It is love. Praise God. It is love. It is love. What causes Pastor Florence to carry a speaker on her head and go and stage it somewhere where the crowds are and preach the gospel? It's love. Love for those people. Love for the world. Praise God. So love is the greatest virtue, the greatest gift, the greatest asset that a believer possesses. You need to allow it to manifest. You need to allow it to show out. Now let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 to 3. It says, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels but didn't love others I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging symbol. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge if I had, had such faith that I could move mountains but don't, didn't love others I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor even sacrifice my body I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Praise God. Basically, love is about valuing others. Valuing others. Praise God. We have people are gifted. There are spiritual gifts that people have. People are talented. But you see these three pass, uh, verses just telling us that look it's not the gift that is most important it is the love you see the corinthian church were priding in their gifts they were they, especially the gift of tongues they were one of the churches that spoke a lot in tongues and they were priding themselves in other spiritual gifts so apostle paul wanted to correct them just like God wants to show you something very more important so that you can really live a fruitful life, a Christian life. So he told them, look, the gifts are nothing. Gifts are not an end to themselves. But gifts should be used for loving others. Gifts should be used for loving others. It is love which makes every gift work. Praise God. Love is just not an emotion. It's not a feeling, by the way. It's not just a feeling. If it was a feeling, it would be disastrous. Because the day you don't feel good, your mood has changed. <laughs> you will stop loving. <laughs> Love is a choice we make. Praise God. You see, what people these days uh, take us love, that just just emotion and lust. You see, we have to be very careful of the Western culture. It's a very deadly culture, and it's so easy to copy it because of the social medias have made made it even worse. What they they talk of as love, it's not love. It is lust. It's a self an expression of selfishness. It is deception. That's how even some people who are struggling with the problems inside their hearts 
people like homosexuals take advantage of them. They begin to deceive them with things, with money, with the falsehood that they love them. You, you will know that they don't love you. Should they infect you with AIDS? Because if you uh, turn to homosexuality and, and, and join uh, that group, yeah, you take up that lifestyle. It's a lifestyle that is so deadly when it comes to diseases. Deadly diseases, they pass on easily because of the lifestyle. Those who are homosexuals, they catch AIDS four times faster than others who are not homosexuals. You see? So, what the pedo there as love is not love. So, love has nothing to do. Huh? You have feelings are there, fine, but it's more than that. It's a choice. Emotions are there, are involved, but it's more than just emotion. It's a choice you make. It's a choice you make about whom and what you will allow as important in your life. What you look at as important. The moment you look at something as not important, it will influence the way you act towards it. The moment you look at someone and say, this person is not important, what follows? Your action towards that person will be determined by that decision you have made. Praise God. So because of the decision we make concerning love, it influences what we do. It influences what we do. Love becomes something we do. Love becomes what? Something we do. Once we have made a decision how to value that thing or that person, love now becomes something we do and will affect the way we react, we, we relate with that person or we handle that something. So love is how we relate with others, basically. So let's look at the description of love. The description of love. The quality of love. The class of love. The description of love. Paul used the Greek word agape to describe love. The Greeks had four types of love. And the one Apostle Paul is talking of here by the Holy Spirit is agape. But let's look at how the Greeks classified love. One, eros. Eros is sexual love between a man and a woman. The second kind of love the Greek uh, classified was storage. That is family love. Love between family members, parents and their children, siblings. Love um, between the siblings. Number three is philia. Brotherly friendship affection is a kind of a strong friendship liking for one another because of friendship it's about it's, it's friendship brotherly friendship you know they are, they are friends who are so close they really help one another by the way it is the highest kind of love a human being can attain without the help of God even a thief will love a fellow thief very faithfully. Yes. It's a friendship love between people. Then there's this fourth one, agape. It's a love that loves without changing. That's the kind of love God exercises towards us. It's a love that loves without changing. It's unconditional love. It is so great. It's a great love that it can be given to the unlovable, to unappealing. It's a kind of a giving love, a sacrificial love. It is sacrificial. It is deny self. Can deny self. Whatever self needs for the sake of another. Sacrificial love. Now, how can we know if we have that love? 
How do we know that we have that love? How? You can know through the word. You need to know. If you don't have it, then you really allow God to help you because the word has the power. Now let's look from verse number four. We shall look at verse number four up to verse number seven. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice. But rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Never fails. It's always hopeful. And endures through every circumstance. Love is patient. It is suffers long. That's what it means. It is suffers long. You just look at how God suffers with us. Look at how God suffers with us. And you know, Peter told some people, he said, God is not slack about some of the things he promises, some of the warning he gives people. Especially the warnings. He's not slack. He's patient. He suffers for a long time because he does not desire that any should perish. You just look at that. That's what we are told in Peter. He does not desire that any should perish. If there was a secret button somewhere that you can press for someone to die, someone who has disturbed you a long time, how many of you would have pressed that button? <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, there are times when people can disturb you. It can be the workplace, it can be the family, it can be neighbors, it can, be, <laughs> can even be the church. <laughs> Let me tell you, you need love both within the church and out of the church. Love is needed everywhere. I'm telling you the truth. The church community should be a loving community. And that's, that's how you can become a light to people who are outside. I'm telling you, don't think they're enjoying their lives. No, they're just pretending. But they know that you have something of value. Praise God. There, there's a Nigerian man who came here and preached here. Uh, he comes from northern Nigeria, where the Islamic radicals are. And... Uh, one day, one of the top Muslim leaders came to him. In fact, that gentleman is called Davo, a priest here. Told him, he said, you people, you know, you are, why are you handling your gospel? Carelessly, why? You people, you have the real thing. You have the real thing. Why are you handling it like the, the way you are carelessly? When you people have the real thing, with us we are we in our religion because of certain things. In fact, it was Frank. He said, "We want money." Some of us we are there because of money. You have the real thing. Why? Can you imagine how this man challenged? Because let me tell you, when you when you begin to read the, even when you read the Quran properly without bias, and you then read the Bible, you will give yourself to, your heart to Christ. I'm telling you. And men have done that. They have given their lives to Christ. They have found out what the real thing is. But because you see, some religion use the law like clutches. You know, if a lame person whose leg is not yet healed, walking with clutches, you remove away the clutches, the person will not walk. So the truth is, Islam is like that. The, in those Islamic countries, they use the law to keep you there. If you try to change, they can come and take away everything from you. The family can excommunicate you. Some of them can even kill you. 
In fact, they can even kill you. It's as bad as that. Those are the clutches they use. Keep people in fear. That's why many are getting saved now than ever. Why? Using satellite television. They put that dish in their home. They have the virtual church there. They listen to the gospel. They give their heart to Christ. They even communicate. That's, that is it. The same thing with China. Praise God. So love suffers long. Do you suffer long? Are you patient with the provocation of other people, the bad thing they do? Or do you allow anger to boil inside you? You see, that's how people fall sick. That's how they get ulcers. That's how their pressures go up. Because they are not living the Christian way of life. There's a lot of protection in living, taking the way of love. A lot of protection. The benefit is enormous. You need to separate your culture from the culture of the kingdom of God. Because your culture, let me tell you, when you get saved, you drop your culture deliberately. Especially the one that contradicts the word. There are other indigenous cultures, in fact, all African cultures, does not accept to be wrong, does not accept people to wait because other cultures say that if people do you bad and you don't react in a bad way, you're a fool. Are you aware of that? You're a fool. You don't just sit there doing nothing. You fight back. Also, in, in the, you pay with the same coin. No. First of all, be patient. Suffer long. In other words, God is not saying that you should suffer with a lot of pain. But wait. Wait. Wait as you allow God to deal with the situation. Wait as you allow yourself to adjust to the situation. Because let me tell you, nobody should let you fail in your Christian life. Because you see, people can mess you up. If you don't take the way of love, you will also be, begin to behave like them and there will be no difference. But if you take the way of love, you are able to wait. You will come to a point where you say, ah, I thank God I kept quiet. I thank God I did not rush. How many of you have ever been thankful that you didn't do something impulsively to, to attack back? How many? Later on, you are grateful <laughs> that you did not, <laughs> you did not act like uh, impulsively. You waited, you waited, and God sorted things out for you. Praise God! Let me tell you, in that waiting, God will sort out things for you. Praise God! People, because they have not made a decision to love, they pack up and leave marriage. They just pack up and leave marriage. Some of who are married now, maybe you one time thought of packing up and leaving. Just imagine the damage that you would have done if you had done that. Look at the damage that you could have done to the people around you. Because you need to know that marriage is not just between two people. No. Marriage involves your pastor, it involves your relatives, it involves your children. When you mess it up, you will, break, you will cause a lot of people to feel pain. So it is better to wait. Someone was telling mommy, I, I'm, 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 I'm just packing, I'm leaving. At this age, I cannot allow this man to continue behaving like this. Mommy told her, I said, no, don't leave. If you go at this time with all your children grown, they said, No, the children have already accepted. They said, It is not right for dad to treat me like that. Dad to treat me. They have already accepted. No, no, marriage is between you and that man, not between you and the children. She told her, I said, If you go, you are not going to last long. <laughs> 
stress will kill you. So the cost sometimes is very high. And the person really realizes and I say, no, it's okay. I've, I've listened. Praise God. Love is patient. It suffers long. And it's kind. It's gentle. It is caring. That's what the kindness is all about. It's kind. That, those are the description of love. It's kind. Love is kind. It cares. That's how you know that you have love. It cares. Praise God. Then we are told that love is not jealousy or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Now you see eight things are being listed here. Eight things love is not. The eight things that love is not. That bad feeling that you have towards others who you think are better in something better than you. Or who have, have something good about themselves. You are envious. You don't feel good about it. Love is not envious. When someone is blessed, don't feel bad about their blessing. Don't. The same God that has blessed them will bless you. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. You see, one of the things that has really helped me to live a life that does not envy or covet is the fact that I believe there's a call upon my life. Everybody has a call. Everybody, you see, uh, for me, if I begin to look at some, what someone else has or how well someone is performing, no, I should just rejoice. I should be encouraged that mine is also there. There's something that God has called me to do. There's some blessing that God has for me. There are portion, my portion is there. Because the moment you begin to look at someone else's portion and life, it means you will never find out what God has for you. It also means you don't know what God has for you. You are not even bothering to work with him so that you can clearly see, you can clearly know the call that God has placed upon your life. How he wants you to touch this world. How he wants you to be a blessing in this world. What gifts he has buried inside you that must come out. Every one of you is gifted, let me tell you. And the way God has gifted people, if they were only to work with him, they'll discover, you will discover that nobody is helpless. And nobody is useless. Nobody. Everybody can contribute towards being a blessing to others. Everybody can be a blessing to others. Martin Luther King said that you don't need a college degree to be a great person. No. You need a heart driven by love. So when you have that heart, you can serve. For you to serve, you don't need a college degree. You need a heart driven by love, then you will be a blessing to your family, to your neighbors. Be a blessing everywhere. You will be a blessing. Love is not proud. It's one of the things that love is not, not proud. Sometimes when I see proud people, I get scared. Because let me tell you, a proud person can easily be used by the devil. Powerful demons can enter them. A leader in the church arena, a leader in the political arena who is proud, as to open himself or herself to powerful spirits that will mess them up, that will cause them to do damage, that will cause them to serve the devil, sometimes without even knowing. But normally if you are a, a, a Christian leader, God wants you. And that's why the Bible says that pride comes before a fall. 
One time I was in an overnight and there was a young man who was very proud. He was a very proud young man. He has always wanted to interpret me. At that time, <laughs> he did not want others to interpret me. He had always wanted to interpret me. And then if he could only come and do it the normal way, but he, he was a very proud man. And so, I began to preach. And he began to interpret. But I tell you, the way the man got confused on the, on the, on the stage, and I was surprised. I, was, I said, what is this? I've never seen something like this. The following day, I knelt down. I said, God, what was going on? And the Lord spoke to me. I was the one opposing him because he's proud. Can you imagine? I was the one opposing him because he's a proud man. So you see the scripture says the Lord opposes the proud. And I got scared. Praise God. <laughs> you see, that's why sometimes people say, ah, but you are a very simple man. I don't want to be complicated. Let me remain simple. <laughs> because, because God is in charge of the universe. Me, I believe that our God is in charge of the universe. From galaxies to governments. To communities, to individual families, to individuals. <laughs> so really, I'm so strongly convicted about that. So our God has all the powers. So don't fear. He has the power to protect you. Praise God. You see? And that's why we are told that faith is what? A shield. Faith what? Is a shield. Faith in what God says. If God says this describe love as he's describing here. And it is good. And it's a way of life we should take. Take it. Don't say ah, people will make a fool of me. Oh, people will take advantage of me. If you believe that what God says is true. Then he will make sure he protects you. That's how faith becomes a shield. And that's why the Bible says love is perfect what? Love drives away what? All fear. But if you love God and you love what he says and you believe what he says then a shield is there to protect you from evil. Praise God. Love is not arrogant. You see when you are arrogant when you are talking to people you show that they are below you. You don't care about how they will feel about the answer or the way you are talking to them. You don't care. You are arrogant. Talk to people carelessly. You don't choose the word you use. Don't let anything you have make you very arrogant. Don't let the money you have make you arrogant. Because they don't last. Anything can happen. You don't know. It is God who is in charge. The universe. You are not in charge. Not rude. When you are rude, you are rough with people. You become bossy. No, love is not like that. Love is not clinkish. It is not what? Clinkish. It is not exclusive. It does not push away other people. Love doesn't say, ah, this one's, ah, that one, this one's are mine. Uh, uh, this one, uh, no, no, I, I'll not love this one. No, love doesn't segregate. It doesn't. Love doesn't segregate. Praise God. Love treats everyone the same. Let me tell you, when you love, people are receptive. Let me tell you, a little child will never respond to someone who is not loving. They are able to see who has love or not. So if you don't love, they won't receive you. 
people won't really receive you the way they should. Love is not touchy. That is cantankerous. It's not touchy. It's not quarrelsome. It's not very sensitive. You know, there are people who are too sensitive. They, 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 they look at every statement you have made. They are very careful. What is this one saying? Why is he saying this? Why is he saying this? Why has he mentioned this? Very sensitive. No, when you are loving, you are not cantankerous. You are not oversensitive. Hmm? Love is not suspicious. That is distrustful. There are people who are always suspicious. Always suspicious. They don't believe anybody. Suspicious of your wife. Suspicious of your friends. Suspicious of the intention of others. Constantly suspicious. No, you cannot love when you are always suspicious. Because you can never be God anyway. Because it is only God that knows the motives of people. Knows everything. Why? Just trust God and do what he has told you to do. That's all. Leave the charm of these things to God. Because people who do their things, who have bad motives, they, are, they will always be exposed. They can't hide forever. You will know them. Just a simple prayer and say, God, just reveal to me this friend. Who is this person? Reveal to me, Lord, the people who are really fighting me. Reveal to me the true people behind this mess. And God will reveal to you. So you will be careful with them. We will continue loving them. Praise God. And actually, you will have your peace. So love is not happy with evil. When you see people who are happy when evil things succeed, yeah? when evil prevails, they are very happy. They don't have love. Verse number seven. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. You see this description of love? Never gives up. Never loses faith. Because he continues believing that what God says and what he or she is praying for and the word is standing on will it manifest, will it show up. So he doesn't lose faith. Never gives up. Sister Betty has refused to give up. On certain things. There's, she wants to do something. She wants to be a certain person. She wants to study. She, she has refused to give up. Because she loves God and believes that God is faithful. I've had testimonies of businesses. That began. And they wouldn't even progress. Several times people discouraged the people who are trying to start that business. So many times. One of them is this KFC. That man tried to sell his recipe for those nice chicken. Hmm? But don't overeat them. <laughs> for those nice chicken. To so many restaurants and the man failed. But never gave up. <laughs> you see, that is he loved what he was doing. He felt that what he was doing, people would love it. People would enjoy it. And true, people enjoy it. But of course, that's why God also gave us self-control. It's a break. Those who drive. Self-control is a break of what? Life. You don't just eat none, uh, without break. There are many good things. You don't just use them without break. <laughs> but let me tell you, the man that succeeded in his business. So, love never gives up. Praise God. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. So, there are four things in this verse number seven that love is strong, believing, Hopeful and enduring. Strong, believing, 
awful and enduring. That's what love is. Now here, God is telling us something. There are some things we can bear. There are certain things we can believe. Sometimes we have hope. We can all hope about certain things. We can endure certain things. But God is calling us to go deeper into love for him. Deeper. It should be all things, not some. We can bear some. We can hope for certain things. We can. But God is calling us to go deeper. Hmm? Go deeper in love for him and for one another and for the perishing world. Lift up your hands and talk to him to help you walk in that love. To help you walk in that love. I want to take this moment and talk to those who are watching online that God loved the world and sent his son that whoever will believe in him shall not perish and have eternal life. If you, you are sure you don't have a relationship with Almighty God, you can enter into a relationship with him through his son Jesus Christ. He so loved the world that he sent his one and only son that whoever will believe in him will walk like him will do things like him. Because Jesus is love. That person will not perish, but have eternal life. Receive Christ as your Lord and Savior through this simple prayer of commitment. Say, dear Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive my sins. I repent of my sins. Right now, I invite you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Bless me and make me a blessing. Pour your love in my heart and let me love through that love. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you say that prayer from your heart, you are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Find a Bible teaching church near you where you can go and fellowship in order to grow spiritually. If you live in Kampala, you are most welcome to fellowship with us at Victory Church of Christ Ministries International. We are at Luzira. And I know your life won't remain the same because of the word that we share from this place. I know it will bless you. Let us know about your commitment uh, to Christ that you have just made. And we shall send you materials that will strengthen you. You get our contacts on the screen and we shall reach you. And I know God will touch you and bless you. In Jesus' name.